In section 9.1, we're testing, claim, testing a claim made about two population proportions. Now, in this section, we're going to take a look at another method for conducting a hypothesis test, and that's the confidence interval method. We'll still go through the critical value method and the p-value method. And then at the end of this problem, it's going to ask us to find a confidence interval and then base a conclusion about the hypothesis, the null hypothesis from that confidence interval. So this problem states, test the given claim. Identify the null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, test statistic, p-value, and then state the conclusion about the null hypothesis, as well as a final conclusion that addresses the original claim. Among 2,080 passenger cars in a particular region, 222 had only rear license plates. Among 369 commercial trucks, 56 had only rear license plates. A reasonable hypothesis is that commercial truck owners violate laws requiring front license plates <clears throat> at a higher rate than owners of passenger cars. Use a 0.05 significance level to test that hypothesis. So part A says test the claim using a hypothesis test. And it says identify the null, null and alternative hypothesis for this test. So that population one corresponds to passenger cars and population two correspond to the commercial trucks. Let success be a vehicle that only has a rear license plate. Okay, now additionally in the problem it says a reasonable hypothesis is that commercial trucks owners violate laws requiring front license plates at a higher rate. Well, commercial truck owners, that was given to us as population two. So if we want to test this claim, and population one is the passenger cars, then what we want to show is that population one is less than population two. The proportion for population one is less than the proportion for population two. So our original claim here, let's go ahead and write it out in symbolic form. So this would be that P sub one is less than P sub two. So the proportion of passenger cars violate the law less than the proportion of commercial trucks. Now let's go ahead and write out what would be true if the original claim was false. Well, if P sub 1 is not less than P sub 2, then P sub 1 has to be greater than or equal to P sub 2. Now we could go ahead and identify the null and alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis always includes equals. So we have P sub 1 is equal to P sub 2. Now in StackCrunch, you won't see it in this form. In StackCrunch, you'll see it in the form P sub 1 minus P sub 2 is equal to 0, which is the same thing. Then the alternative hypothesis, let's take a look at steps one and two. The alternative hypothesis is the one that does not conclude equals. So it would be P sub one is less than P sub two. Now in StackCrunch, the way that you'll see this right now would be P sub one minus P sub two is less than zero. So now we have our null and alternative hypothesis. Now just remember, this is what you'll see on the homework this is how you'll write it out in this form. In StackCrunch, you'll see it written out this way. Okay. So let's go back to the original problem. Okay, so null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. That'd be answer choice B. Okay, now it's asking us for the test statistic. So now let's go ahead and open up StackCrunch so we can find the test statistic and we'll find the p-value as well. Okay, so now in StackCrunch we're going to go to stat. And now since we're dealing with population proportions, we're going to go to proportion stats. And what we have here is two samples. We have two populations. And now we're going to go with summary. And now we go ahead and enter, enter our information. So sample one, the number of successes. This was 222 passenger cars that didn't have rear license plates. And the number of observations was 2,080. Sample two, this is commercial trucks. Only 56 had rear license plates. And then how many were there altogether? 369. And now we're performing a hypothesis test. So we have P sub one minus P sub two is equal to zero. And then the alternative, P sub one minus P sub two is less than zero. Now let's go ahead and put show critical value. 
what was our significance level? 0 0.05. Okay, now let's go ahead and click on compute. And now we have our test statistic right over here. So let's enter that in. So we have negative two point, round to two decimal places, five one. Okay. Next, identify the p-value. Okay, let's take a look at the p-value, 0 0.006. All right, now it's asking us to state the conclusion about the null hypothesis as well as the final conclusion. So over here, let's take a look at the p-value and the significance level. So our p-value, 0 0.006, this is less than or equal to 0 0.0. So our p-value is less than our significance level, which tells us that we have to reject the null hypothesis. So we know that we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And now since the original claim did not include equals, what that means is that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that commercial truck owners violate laws requiring front license plates at a higher rate than owners of passenger cars. So all of that very similar to chapter eight. Now in chapter nine, there's another method, which is the confidence interval method. So it says identify the confidence interval limits for the appropriate confidence interval. That population one corresponds to passenger cars, population two corresponds to commercial trucks. Let a success be a vehicle with only a rear license plate. So we wanna find out what the confidence interval is. So now let's go back to that whiteboard. We have a significance level of 0 0.05. Now the main thing we're trying to construct a confidence interval is we have to figure out what's the appropriate confidence level. Okay, so <clears throat> what we have here is a left tail test. And we have a significance level of 0 0.05. So this area over here is 0 0.05. Now the area to the right hand side, the right tail, this also has to be 0 0.05. So now the appropriate confidence level that we're gonna have is this area in between. So what's left over? So remember, the total area under the normal distribution curve is one. So if I have 0 0.05 in the left tail, I have to have 0 0.05 in the right tail, which means that there is 0 0.90 in the middle for our confidence interval. Now in the notes, if you have a one tail test, so just remember this, one tail test, the appropriate confidence interval or confidence level will be one minus two times the significance level. So in this case, we have one minus two times 0 0.05, which would give us one minus 0 0.10, which is a 90% confidence level. Okay. Now, if it was a two tail test, if it was a two tail test, so hypothetically two tail test, the confidence interval, you have one minus alpha, the confidence level that you'd be using would be one minus alpha, this would be one minus 0 0.05, which would be 0 0.95. But since this is a one tail test, the appropriate confidence level that we're gonna be using is 90%. So now let's go back to StackCrunch and we'll find out what the confidence interval is. Do the side by side view. Okay. Now instead of inputting all the information again, what I could do, so I have the previous information from my hypothesis test, I could just go to options and I could click on edit. And then instead of performing a hypothesis test, what I want to do is I want to construct a confidence interval. So now we're going to go ahead and put the level, which is 0 0.90, and then just click on compute. And now we have our lower limit and our upper limit. So let's go ahead and put our lower limit in. So we have negative 0 
point, so negative 0 0.0, how many decimal places? 4, 7, 7, 7. And then our upper limit here is negative 0 0.0124. Now let's make a conclusion based on the confidence interval that we have. When you're constructing a confidence interval, you want to see if zero is included in the confidence interval or not. So here, because the confidence level, confidence interval limits, since these are just strictly negative values, zero is not included in this confidence interval. So confidence interval limits do not, do not contain zero. Okay, so since the confidence interval limits do not contain zero. That means that there is a difference between the two population proportions. If it did include zero, that means that the two proportions may not be different. Okay, so that means that there is sufficient evidence. So that means that there is a significant difference between the two proportions, which means that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that commercial truck owners violate laws requiring front license plates at a higher rate than owners of passenger cars.